Billionaires, welcome to the Big Business Minute. I'm Monet, Monet Oliver de Place. The true amount of our take from the Iraqi war may never be known, but if the peace movement has its way, the 1.8 billion in tax dollars unaccounted for by Halliburton may be the last of the good times for the president's billionaire cronies. American anti-war sentiment reaches a fever pitch this weekend in Washington as protesters gather from around the world for what is expected to be the largest peace demonstration since the start of the president's energy industry growth initiative, or Operation Iraqi Freedom. For more, we check in with our senior protest scholar, Ivy League Legacy, standing by just outside the White House where the marches are expected to pass. Ivy. Hello, Monet. Ivy, I understand there are two contingents amassing in D.C. this Saturday, and rallies will be held both for and against the war. Where will billionaires for Bush's war be stationed? Well, as a minority of 0.1%, we're sure to be outnumbered, so location is everything. We'll assemble in front of the Treasury Building. Not content to preach to the choir, we're going to forgo the Pentagon-sponsored rallies and stand in the trenches, face to face with those who somehow don't agree that our prosperity should come at the expense of everyone else. Protesting the protesters? That sounds a little risky. What about protection? Don't worry, Monet. We'll be standing behind velvet ropes, and everyone knows only VIPs can get past these. Um, Ivy, these people are angry. Some of them lost loved ones fighting for our interests. There's a good chance they will not respect the very real and important social divider that is the velvet rope. I hope you are planning a little more protection than that. <laughs> Yes, of course, Monet. About 300 of DC's finest in full battle gear. All pro-war supporters get them. Uh, speaking of which, I understand there's been a change in the arrest laws in the District of Columbia. Yeah, apparently the nation's capital lost a case brought against it by activists who felt their arrests in 2002 were brutal and unjustified. The new law limits the amount of force the police can use and authorizes it only in extreme cases. Well, uh, I mean, Ivy, draconian police tactics have been our bread and butter for keeping protesters from having any kind of real effect. Listen, I know, that and complete corporate control of the media, but billionaires here in D.C. are quite upset about the changes. Really? What do they say? I spoke to well-known pioneer fundraiser Meg Abux, who says she's dismayed that high donors like herself will no longer be able to don riot gear and beat down protesters alongside the police. But why can't they? That's always so much fun. The new laws require badge numbers to be clearly displayed, even in riot gear. That is a setback. And that's not all. According to billionaire Warren Profit, the police can no longer corral and mass arrest everyone. I mean, if the police cannot crush the only remaining dissent that stands in the way of our unregulated profiteering, what the hell are they good for? What about protesters like Cindy Sheehan demanding that we get out of Iraq? What can you tell Americans who may be on the fence about supporting the war? The truth is, we understand. War is hell. Halliburton, that is. <laughs> they just announced a 284% rise in war profits. Really, what's not to love? Ivy, not to be a downer, but there's been a lot of talk on both sides of the aisle about supporting the troops. What do the billionaires you're talking to have to say about that? Well, actually, we don't support the troops as much as we support the words support the troops. And those bumper stickers and ribbons do wonders for the war effort. More bumper stickers! Bigger bumpers! War. What is it good for? If you have to ask, you'll never understand. Monet? Of course. Thank you, Ivy. Our senior protest scholar, Ivy League Legacy, reporting. And finally tonight, Further south, Rita is now a Category 5 hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. While we think about those who remain in its path, let us give a hearty huzzah to Big Oil, who, in anticipation of the storm, raised oil prices before she even hit. Because it's never too soon to turn unprecedented oil profits into, well, even bigger unprecedented oil profits. 
You go, Big Oil. And that does it for this edition of the Big Business Minute. Tune in next week for my in-depth look at George Bush and fiscal responsibility entitled, Because the Deficit Isn't Growing Fast Enough. Until then, stay up to date on this and all your billionaire news at billionairesforbush.com. I'm Monet all over the place, reminding you that we're all in this together. Sort of. Good night. <laughs>